I want to try something a little bit different than what I did yesterday. If you have a question that you feel like is appropriate in the moment, then give a wave and a shout, and we can take kind of questions at that time. If you feel like it's a little bit of a tangent, I'll save some time at the end, and we can uh, we can do uh, we can do questions on any kind of shooting related topics uh, at that point at the uh, the end of the session. Uh, my background, just really quickly, worked in the NBA since 2009. Uh, happy to say that every single player that I've worked with at the NBA level has shot a career high in my time with, uh, with them. So I want you to know that when, when you work with a player, it doesn't really matter what you teach, it matters the results that you're able to get. And if you get results, you were correct in what you did. And there's all these arguments about should we be teaching this way, should we be teaching that way. If the player got better, what you did was right. And we'll never know if somebody had, would be able to have taken that same player to a, to a higher level. It doesn't matter. You helped them get better. What you did was the correct thing. Great job by you and great job by them. Okay? So. I am not going to, I said this yesterday, this will be a repeat for the people who are coming back uh, for a second day. I am not going to teach you the way shooting should be taught. I'm going to teach you how I teach shooting. And we are in different worlds. In the same game, we have different circumstances. You're working with youth players to develop them over time. I'm being given elite athletes that we have millions of dollars invested in and that are uh, held back by this skill that probably hundreds of other people have tried to help them with and haven't been able to, and we need to see if we can figure out a way to improve this particular player. So while there's similarities, we're all playing basketball and we're all coaching basketball and we're all working with athletes, there are different worlds and no one is better than the other. I'm not trying to imply that, but there are different circumstances. And so just be aware of the circumstances. Try and take something from what I do today and put your own flavor, your own spin on it. Uh, add it to your repertoire if you feel like it fits and, uh, and see if you can grow as a coach. I'm constantly trying to grow. I'm gonna show you something that at the end that for the last couple of years, I've been trying to add and incorporate and I'll be totally honest. I don't know when the correct time to add it or I'm, I'm constantly playing with it, trying to figure out if I can get better myself and, and if I can use this little tool to help my players get better still. So I'll be uh, explaining that as we, as we kind of get towards the end of the session. Really quickly, for the people who weren't here yesterday, the, the theory that I want to work towards Everything that I come back to as, as a coach is imagining that the hoop is at the other end of this line. This is a line I call the target line. I want to create energy with any part of my body as much as possible that flows along this line because I'm gonna give that energy to the ball, which, and if the energy is flowing this direction, it will get the ball moving that direction, which will be towards the hoop. I don't wanna create with any part of my body in a perfect world energy that moves across that target line because I'm gonna give that to the ball which is gonna push it away from the hoop. Okay? I need energy flowing at the hoop and I need energy flowing up in the air. And as much as possible with every part of our body, we're trying to create energy going at the hoop and up in the air that we can give to the basketball. And whenever I'm in doubt on what I'm trying to work on, I come back to those two ideas. Is it at the hoop, is it up in the air? Um, so I call that positive and negative power. What today we're gonna to work on is we're gonna work on how I assess the shot, how I figure out quickly what we need to work on, what habits are holding a player back, how I isolate that habit, and try to layer drills to build new habits, okay? There are no hard, fast rules here. You're going on your experience and your intuition constantly, you're testing, you're experimenting. There's no shoot 100 of these, do this for three days. Uh, move on to this drill, do this for this. There's none of that. You're constantly experimenting and seeing, can we get this new habit to apply into this new situation? Hopefully getting it to apply in the game situation down the road, okay? so. 
can I grab somebody that feels like they need to work on their shot? I'll get somebody to stand up and jump out here right now. Three, two, one. Awesome. Can you grab a basketball for me? I appreciate that. Thank you for being willing to help. You guys get ready because you're going to be asked uh, to come help uh, at some point. So, I'm just going to have you shoot around. I'm just going to watch. I'll watch a lot of video on a player. I'll watch as much video when I'm told I'm going to be working with Aaron Gordon. I found Synergy, got on, watched every single one of his shots from his, day, uh, from his year in, uh, in Arizona, and I watched every single thing that I could find on uh, YouTube. But video lies. What you see in video sometimes isn't accurate because of different angles. So if you have the luxury of video, absolutely watch it, but you will learn more in the first five minutes of working with a player. So be yourself. Don't worry about being perfect or anything like that. Be yourself. Let's just kind of shoot around. I want you to move around a little bit, and let's just kind of see what kind of habits we have. Here's the things that I'm watching. I start with the rotation of the basketball. I watch the rotation of the ball, and if we can get the ball rotating purely, then we're seeing that the ball is being, the middle of our hand is shooting the middle of the basketball. Most young players don't do this. Okay? Don't worry, nobody's judging you. Um, so I'm watching the rotation of the ball, I'm watching the arc of the basketball, and I'm asking myself, does it come out of his hand in a consistent way? Uh, and does it have enough lift on it to have a chance to go in? So, good shot. Right now, that's a good one, and you're not warmed up, so I'm gonna talk about you as though like everything was perfect, like that you were your best self today, when the reality is you're probably a little nervous, probably feel on the spot, and I understand that. Thank you for being willing to, to be, well, you're not done yet though. Um, so, we, what I noticed is the ball doesn't spin purely, and this is the case of 95 to probably even 99% of young players. They don't quite shoot the middle of the basketball. Most young players, and all of us included, Steph Curry included, Diana Taurasi included, we all started as eight-year-olds shooting this shot, and it's really hard to shoot the middle of the basketball when you have one hand on either side. But that's where we start. And when you get into the 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year old range, you're, you're, you're starting to change and get towards a one-handed shot, but the process isn't complete yet. Your process isn't complete. Slightly two-handed, and that's fine. That's what people your age tend to do. Now, we can say we can try and find simple little ways to just encourage him into uh, getting a one-handed shot, and I can force him uh, into, like just try and, Try and just take the non-shooting hand off and let your shooting hand figure it out over, over time. That can work, okay? It's not what I tend to do because I don't have that luxury of time and development over years. We need results a little bit faster. So this is what I do with an NBA player. I want you to move in, and what I want to do is I want to simplify your environment, okay? You have a bad habit, and that's fine. We all have bad habits. I have bad habits too. I want to put you in a position where you can do something new and as soon as possible start to get some decent results so that you feel good about the, uh, the process. Here's your bad habit. When you get up to your set point, your shooting hand isn't under the, under the middle of the ball. It's slightly off to the side. And so your shooting hand is pushing over that direction and your body knows that and you end up pushing a little bit with your non-shooting hand to push it that, back that way and you're trying to get those two variables to cancel each other out to create straight. And you can do it, but it's just harder to do and as soon as the game starts and you've got all these other variables to worry about too, you're not able to repeat that motion as consistently as if you're just standing in, in the gym. So, we're not perfect in the gym, and we're certainly never going to be perfect in the game. Let's see if we can get better at the habit. So what I want to do is I want to try and isolate the point where the mistake happens. And there was a great demonstration, I'll just put you on hold for a second, that uh, the head coach of the University of Calgary did. His name's Dan Van Horn. He's a wonderful person. And Dan said, this is what it's like to change a habit. And he, have, he happened to have a cardboard box in his office uh, full of team gear. And he took the, a pen 
and he jammed it into the, the uh, side of the cardboard box and made a jagged path. So just sort of a jagged crease or, or, or tear in the, uh, in the side of the box with the pen. And he said, so this is like the, the, the synchronization of the neurons firing to get your muscles moving uh, to shoot a basketball. And let's say right at one point where the, uh, the, the line becomes, uh, changes direction, he says, let's say that's where the player makes the mistake. If we just keep shooting, then you just fire the, the, the neurons in the same sequence and that path just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And he continues to do that. Now the pathway that the pen has made is, is really deep and really easy for the pen to follow. He says, but this is where the mistake is. Now we can't just continue to shoot and expect that things are going to change. We got to get to that area and say, okay, the path now goes here. We want it to go here. We've got to now start to create a new path. And when he, when he showed me that, that just, it was a perfect representation of exactly what I try to do. You make a mistake here. And a lot of the mistakes that we make happen either at the floor or at the set point. So I spend a lot of time at those two positions to try and relearn some new habits. Can you put the ball up at the set point? And we want to try and get, you were at last night's session, weren't you? Okay. We want to try and get the middle of your hand on the middle of the ball. Remember isolation drill from what we did last night? Okay. So we're going to put the ball up at our set point and we're going to let our body learn where the middle of the ball is. Already he put the ball up at a, at a set point thinking he was right and if we were standing behind you'd be able to see he's about a half or an inch off to the right side of the ball with the middle of his hand which is going to push the ball that direction which means he's going to need that non-shooting hand. And so we got to get out of that, we got to get into that. Now take your non-shooting hand off, Let, uh, put it beside. I want it but not touching. So right there. Okay, bend your knees. This is a game body position. This is where we want to learn to get to, but your body doesn't have familiarity with this position. So let your body get familiar with it. Hold it for three seconds. One, two, three, then lift and snap. Good. Which direction the, did the ball go? Left. left. So that's important for you to know. What would cause the ball to go left? Um, right. Which side would it have been on? He said it wasn't centered, and he's correct. Uh, your hand would be on the right side, which would push it to the left, okay? So you now know that you, we got some feedback. Was your body creating energy to the left? No. Was your uh, non-shooting hand creating energy? Your non-shooting hand wasn't even touching the basketball. It must have been something right in here. So you started on the middle of the ball, and most likely you just went a little bit off to the right side as you were lifting, okay? Let's see if we can find the right position and lift straight up and get the ball moving straight. Okay. And everything that we're working on, there has to be accountability to new positions. If you're not holding somebody accountable, two, three, lift. Good. If you're not holding somebody accountable to getting a different position, you're just allowing them to re uh, continue with the same old habits. Okay. Find that position. Now. Okay, that's good. Hold it there. Two, three, lift. And it's not going to change right away. We're noticing everything is still going just a little bit left. That's fine. I don't have magic words. I can't just say to you, hey, like get on the middle of the basketball and then you do it and you're good at it right away. If somebody teaches me to play chess, you can go ahead and shoot while, uh, while I'm talking. If somebody teaches me to play chess, I'm not going to, even though they explain all the rules and they explain the strategy, I'm not going to win the first game. I have to gain some experience before I can actually start to win. Now, did you isolate the skill? I'm glad you made the shot. Did you isolate the skill or did the speed try uh, accidentally just allow you to go back to your old habits potentially? I want you to slow down a little bit. I want you to be precise. We not need to start to change habits. Repeating the same thing and expecting your habits to change may not work. Two, three, lift. Good. Good, good. And we're not worried about results. And I make that really clear to the, the player in the beginning. I am not worried about you making any shots today simply because I, I hope you make some shots, but I'm really worried on, you can go ahead. I'm really worried about can we get in new positions that will allow us to make more shots down the road. So we're isolating this little position that is holding him back. Good, good adjustment. Two, three, 
lift. Good. And allowing him the opportunity to change the habits. Okay. I use a couple of examples with players. He, and you can keep shooting while I'm, I'm talking. Good. Um, the first example that I'll do it, I'll ask players, have you taken a driving lesson yet? Okay. And you hopefully get a couple of people to, to put up their hands. Where did the first driving lesson occur? The first driving lesson didn't occur on the freeway at, at rush hour. The first uh, driving lesson usually occurs in a parking lot on a Sunday morning. Two, three, lift. Good. Um, in an empty parking lot. And we do that so that the new driver does not have to worry about the variables that occur when driving. They don't have to worry about traffic laws. They don't have to worry about other cars. They don't have to worry about pedestrians. They don't have to worry about road conditions and all these, or where they're going and how to get there. They don't have to worry about any of that. They can focus on the skill of controlling the car, which they're not very good at right now. Okay. Then as their skill in, their skill in that little micro skill of controlling the car increases, we add variables to make that situation more like driving a real car. I have three really simple ways that I start by adding variables. Okay? The first really three simple ways to make this situation translate to a game a little bit more are, can you do it from further out? Can we add distance? Can we add a little speed? Can we add a little movement? Now, you need to know what you're working on and you need to hold yourself accountable to continuing to build that new habit in this more difficult environment. So, you're starting to get some good results right now. Perfect. Is this a game environment? No, not even close. We're standing stationary eight feet from the hoop with taking three seconds to shoot the basketball. But can you do that a little further out? Okay. Now, let's see. And we'll what you're trying to do in every single one of these little development drills, two, three, lift, good. What you're trying to do is find that sweet spot in between this is so easy that it's not even a challenge, and this is so difficult that I can't meet the challenge. If it's either one of those two extremes, you're wasting your time. Okay? You're not getting, if it's so easy, then it's not going to translate. If it's so big of a challenge, you're not going to change the habit. We need to find the place where it's a bit of a challenge, but a challenge that you can meet. Good. Which direction did he miss to? Right. And so where was your hand most likely? On the right side of the back. Can you fix that? Can you fix it? Uh, I need an answer. Are you able to fix it? Yes. Could you fix it if you didn't know what was, the, what was the problem? No. So we need to know what the problem is. The player needs to know, I tend to make that move. That's fine. You're going to make that move for the rest of your life. You're going you're to make that mistake at times. We just want to see if instead of making it 20% of the time, you can make it 5% of the time. And now we have a chance to make 15% more shots. Okay? We're just trying to simplify our habits. Okay? So first, uh, first way that we can make things more difficult, we can add... Uh, a little bit of distance. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being the, uh, the first one to step out. I need somebody else to, to help me out. Somebody jump up. Three, two, one. And guys, I'm going to be asking again, figure out right now who the next person is. Okay? And be ready to do that quickly. Okay? I will hold you accountable to the things that I need. I need you to make a quick decision next time. Can you do that for me? Yes or no? Perfect. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm going to give you a few reps on the same drill because he got a whole bunch of practice. You haven't had that yet. But you were there last night, were you not? Good. Now, let's talk about that result for a second. Every single NBA, and they, these guys heard it last night, they heard this same talk. You may need to move in a little bit. Maybe you're not quite ready for that distance, especially when you're not warm. Every single NBA play, player that I've worked with, we've started from this kind of a distance. Six foot ten, seven foot, six foot three, all these guys with millions of dollars in the bank account and, and some of the 450 best basketball players in the world, in theory. All started from this distance because I really wanted to simplify the environment. We needed to start to actually tangibly change habits pretty quickly. So 
every single one of them airballed a shot from that distance. Some of them multiple shots over the first workout. While this is a simple drill, if you do it well, it's not easy in the beginning. You need to develop the skills to be able to uh, get into this position and make this move. Now I want you to focus on trying to get the ball a little bit higher at your set point. Okay? I want you avo to avoid trying to look over top of the basketball at your set point. Because if you do, look where your hand is positioned. It's positioned on the back of the ball. It's going to push the ball forward. We want to try and get to here. Now you're going to start somewhere like that or ideally start here, get into that position, but hopefully continue on to this position. Now our hand is underneath the ball. Now we're able to lift. So let's learn where this one is, not reinforce where that one is because that will lead to a flat shot. Put the ball up here. So same drill isolating a different habit. First gentleman, the habit was that he wasn't quite on the middle of the ball, he was off to the side. This one, we're a little bit towards the back and we have a chance to push the ball forward. We want to push the ball, lift the ball a little bit higher. Two, three, lift. Good. So the first way that we added uh, a layer was we made it, uh, we did the same thing a little bit further out. We can do the same thing a little bit faster. Instead of taking three seconds, can you find the correct position in two seconds? Can you find the correct position for one second? Can you find the correct position and not have to stop in it? And I'll show you a couple of little drills that I do to start to build this up into a more realistic shooting motion as opposed to just a form shooting. I call this drill that we're doing here isolation drill. We're isolating the set point. We're relearning where that is and how to make a simple move out of that position because most players miss the position and make a complicated move. Remember ABC shooting? Okay. I want index finger right on the top of the basketball. Pointed at the hoop. Yeah, don't worry about the, the dodges. We can go on the L in Wilson there. Okay. Get your feet wide. Toes the target. Good. Tuck the ball in. There's, watch that thumb. Don't let that thumb get narrow. Okay. There's your A point. That's your starting point. Okay. Bend your knees. Okay. Hold that. Lift the ball to your set point. Non shooting hand cut. Now, is that the set point that we were working on before? Ah, good. So we got to uh, everything. Accountability. We got to apply what we're learning into this new environment. Okay. Brian, I love what you said yesterday about the, I can't remember how you phrase it, but something to the effect of, you said it a couple different ways, like it's not a, a shooting problem, it's a stopping problem. I love that and like there's just seeing like the little twisting it, it motions. Uh, while, yeah, stopping problem, it applies to our shot as well. So try and track knees over top of toes. I'm just going to hold you accountable to getting into positions that are going to help now. Can we take the ball from there and get to that set point? We tried it once and we weren't very good at it. We went back to our old position. Perfect. A little bit higher. There. Good. Now, if I took away, don't move this hand. If I took away this, okay, you're able to support it, but you're not quite underneath it. We got to get to, to there. Okay. Go back to A. Take it to B. Non-shooting hand off. Good. Look. Good. So this will be ABC shooting. I've added a little bit of movement. We can add speed, we can add distance, and we can add movement. The movement that I'm adding isn't with his body necessarily, it's just with the shooting hand arm. Can we get the ball from triple threat to the correct set point and, uh, and lift correctly out of there? I'm applying this little micro skill that the player isn't very good at of missing their set point and now asking them instead of just starting there, can you find that position in the middle of a shooting motion? And I'll actually ask them to stop and confirm. So I want this drill to be in two different segments because I want to confirm. Watch your index fingers serve over on the side of the ball. Good. Try and simplify that as much as you can. Good. Good. Feet a little bit wider. Trend. Here's what I see. We'll just see if you can feel it. Don't change it necessarily, but just see if you can feel what I'm talking about. Being the mirror image of you, just a little rotation there to see if you can start square and just bend. Good. Hold that position. Two. Good. So just constant accountability. The next thing that I'll do, we talked about adding movement. Uh, I'll add what I added the movement of the ball from triple threat to our set point. Let's add movement of our body. Back up a step for me. 
then hop and land in A position. So you're going to try and hop and land right there. Good. Lift it to B. And remember, trying to apply what we learned to, about getting into that set point into this more complicated environment. <coughs> Watch those knees. Don't let that twist. Ultimately, I have to hold him accountable, but I'm, my goal is to teach him to hold himself accountable. If it's not the player building the habit, it's not going to work. Great shot. It's, it can start out my idea, but we spend so little time, even at, at, at the NBA level, we spend so little of the player's time on the floor with them, they need to be working on this. They need to be thinking about the habit. And it's not that they need to be doing exactly the drills that I lay out for them. They need to be attempting to build the habit themselves. If they aren't attempting to build the habit, then they're not, it's not going to happen. You can teach me to not bite my fingernails. Eventually, I have to decide not to put my fingers in my mouth and chew. Okay? You're killing it. You're doing a great job. Okay? How many in a row have you made? Four or five? Maybe. So we're getting some indicators. You're hitting the correct position. You're doing a better job of that. We're getting some indicators. You're ready for more. We don't know that for sure, but we're going to take our best guess because the results are indicating. I don't want to now take you from this parking lot where you're driving the car around safely and say, let's try the freeway because how's that probably going to go? Okay, and you're going to get you're going to crash into something potentially, and it would be nice if we were able to do that. Maybe it's possible, but I don't want to run the risk of derailing your development and 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 crushing it by putting you in an environment you're not ready for, and then you think this doesn't work. It could work. We're just not ready for that environment yet. So let's just make the environment a little bit harder. Let's put a cat in the parking lot as we drive around. So start over here. You got a basketball in your hand. Can you hop to your right? Sorry. <laughs> that was my, yeah, thank you. Hop to your left, hop to my right. I love that. Good. And now I have a little kind of rule. If, if you're doing a stationary drill and you want to keep your feet on the floor, I'm great with that. And guys, you're listening in on this because this will apply to you. If your feet are moving, if your feet are actively engaged, let your feet flow, let your feet come off the floor. That's sort of a general rule because I get players that usually ask at some point, do you want me jumping on this? If your feet are moving into it, let's learn the habit of, of jumping uh, and using our legs and let, letting that energy pull our feet off the floor. So can you apply these habits into this slightly more complicated environment? Good. Excellent. And if we can go left, we also need to be able to go right. Let's hop to a right as well. And be smart about the, uh, the distance that you, you shoot at because we've added a layer. We've made something more complicated. Maybe we need to take away another layer uh, in order to be able to, to, to execute. If we make something a little bit more challenging in one way, maybe we, in the beginning we need to simplify it in another way. So you can add movement but do it a little closer in. You can add movement, but take away a little bit of speed, slow down a little bit, and just hold yourself accountable to applying what you're working on into this more complicated environment. Excellent, you're killing it. I want to keep going with you just for a second. Give me one more where you're really hot. Let's move in just one step, but on that shot, push with your legs, let your feet come off the floor. Good. Uh, hop to your right or your left, I don't care which direction. Let your feet come off the floor. Okay, and that's where we start to, you sped up the shooting part and you missed your set point just a, a, a tiny little bit. And we would, so I want to continue, even with your feet coming off the floor, reinforcing where that position is. Uh, we're missing the, the drill. So, not your, not your fault at all. Hop over, hit the set point, let the feet come off the floor on the shot. Okay, so still the same drill, still ABC. One, two. Good. And this, for the first 20 shots, this can be a little weird. If a player has spent a whole bunch of time with their feet on the floor, 
figuring out how to time the leg push can take them a, a, a couple of shots, and so just give them the time. I will go through workouts where I don't say a word for 10, 20 shots because I can see they're, they're attempting to figure the correct thing out. They're trying to, to, to simplify their motion. They just need a little bit of time. And I had a great moment. I like to golf. I'm not a good golfer. But when I go to the driving range, if there's an instructor giving somebody a lesson, I'm just going to put you on hold for a second. If there's an instructor giving somebody a lesson, I always try and go to the stall near the lesson so that I can listen to the teacher. Sometimes you hear like a great thing that they say that you're like, oh man, I love that expression. I want to, I'm going to, I got to remember to use that. Sometimes they have a little drill that is great in that sport that you think, oh, I can make this little change and apply that into uh, and make this a basketball drill. So I always try and be involved, and I, 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 I had a guy behind me giving a lesson to a middle-aged woman who was very, very new to the game. And she would hit one shot, and he gave her feedback on what happened on that swing. And then she hit another shot trying to do the, the, the thing that he told her, and she made apparently a different mistake, and he gave her feedback on that mistake. So then on the next swing, she tried to fix the second one, and she made a different mistake, and he told her about that. And so now the fourth swing, she's trying to correct the third piece of advice that she gets, and she's never getting any reps on any single one of them. And I was losing my mind for this woman, thinking the poor lady is not getting a chance to work on any one thing. He's just constantly giving her a new thing to think about. And I've really made a a conscious effort to get better at just shutting up and letting you figure out how to, how to exercise this new micro skill, which obviously I'm not going to do great in a, uh, a coaching clinic environment, the shutting up part. But uh, give the player time. If they're trying to do the right thing, maybe they need 25 reps or two days of reps, or three weeks of reps. And I, I had a moment watching Chip England, who's the shooting coach in San Antonio, and in my opinion, the best shooting coach in the world by far. He had Tiago Splitter, and Tiago was a below average free throw shooter, and they were doing isolation drill, and Tiago could not snap his wrist on line with the target. He would hold the ball here, and snapping wrists offline constantly. And I went to watch this workout thinking that my workouts were really boring and Chip and Tiago did one drill for the entire time. And Chip said at the end of it, if he can't snap his wrist along the target line, then anything that we do is just going to be limited by his inability to do that particular thing. So we can't move on until he can do this well. And it took a little time. It took months. And sometimes at the NBA level, you have a patient uh, owner and, and GM and coach that will allow you the time to correct a little detail. Uh, you guys, some, you, you have time. You've got years, potentially. Maybe not with the player yourself, but the player has years to continue to develop take the time to get a little detail that is holding them back correctly. Uh, so Tiago finally started to get the ball uh, online with the, snapping the wrist online with the target, made a, a dramatic jump as a, uh, a jump shooter. Can you now, what was your name again? Sam? Can you now, everything that we've done, your chest has been facing the rim. Okay. Can we complicate the movement ever so slightly? And now there's a cat and a dog in the parking lot. Can you turn, find yourself square, pay attention to those knees, don't let them drift in, try not to twist your hips, land with your index finger on the top of the basketball, get it to the right set point, take your non-shooting hand off. We've got a few things now we've got to apply into this situation. Good, very good, great start. Every new little wrinkle that we add, player may not have done this uh, before. They may not have been in this position in this kind of a setting. 
So don't expect the results to be fantastic. They need to learn to apply what they've learned into this setting. Good. Good. Try and get the set point just a little higher. Don't let it drift back down sort of over, over, uh, under your nose. Good. Love that one. Great shot. Really good. Sam, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, can I get another person in? So we are, we've added a little distance. We've added a little bit of speed. We've added a little bit of movement. When do we feel like we're ready for it? Okay. Those are the first three layers that I start with. Distance, speed, simple movement. The next layers that I'll start to add, okay, can we do this in a, with more complicated movement? Can we do this in a game situation? So rather than I'll do for simple movement, just little things like can you push back onto a jump stop? Can you forward pivot? Can you reverse pivot on the outside foot? Basically the last step of any move that I can think of in a, in a basketball game. And we'll just focus on that last step, getting into the right positions. Then can you apply it into a game situation with a game cut? Okay? And there's just so many of those and they're fairly obvious. Like, can you? Well, we'll go through a couple of them. Uh, you were, were you out last night? Okay. Let me give you a couple of reps of, of ABC as much as you can. And I'll, I'll show you a little version of ABC that I do with players who tend to not put their hand on the basketball. Alfred Payton and I invented this drill together because he would initiate his shot from this position. And I took video one day, I said to him like, Alfred, if you didn't know this player at this position where they're starting to shoot the basketball, would you know which is their shooting hand? And he looked at it, he's like, great point, okay? We want to get your shooting hand on the middle of the basketball as early as possible and avoid having to find the middle of the ball as you're in the shooting motion. Will that happen? Yes. Do we want to create that habit? No, as, or at least as little as possible. So Al Alfred and I invented this drill and with the NBA ba uh, basketball, there's the NBA logo that has Jerry West in the middle and that's on the middle of the ball. We'll use Wilson, the Ellen Wilson here. I want you to put your index finger on the, uh, yeah, along the L, good. Grip that basketball, bend feet nice and wide apart, bend your legs, good. And I'm now, I'll be the non-shooting hand. Put your non-shooting hand beside, but don't touch. I'll be the non-shooting hand, okay. And it's just accountability to get your hand on the middle of the basketball here, good. Find the correct set point, so I'm gonna help him find the right set point, and then he takes over the motion from, from there. So you now, from here, lift, snap, good. Don't worry, we're good. Are you, is this new to you? You're good, I know you are. Okay, tuck it in, a little closer to your body. Good, bend your knees. Good, find your target. Look at the target, good. Okay, and then lift to there and go. Good, this is a good start. There, knees, eyes, good. Now shoot a hand off, lift. And you'll get players who they put, they want to kind of turn the ball. Nope, you can't turn the ball. And we can't go there and up. You're holding them accountable to, put your index finger, on the middle of the ball in a position to push the ball along the target line all the way through. And then the next point will say, okay, I want you to do that drill, but without me holding the basketball. So you're going to hold it. You're going to put out no longer on the top of the ball. Try, if we're gonna do something precise, let's do it precisely, good. Then lifting, good, excellent. Okay, so now he's applying what we tried to work on, which was staying on the middle of the ball all the way through the release into this situation where he has to do it instead of me guiding him through it. Could you do that a little further out? Could you do that a little faster? Could you do that with a little bit of movement? So we can add layers to that drill. The, the, the way that I'll add a little movement to that drill, can you back up a step? Here's where the L is, hop forward, land, put your finger on the L. Good. There, oh, didn't have your knees bent when you land. Eyes on the target. There, go. 
Good. Back up two steps. Hop in. Good. There. Go. Good. Face that direction. Hop and land. Put your finger on the L. Uh, when you put your hand on the ball, make sure you've got in a position to control the ball. Like right now, I'm controlling it for you. I'm not going to be here in a second, so you've got to put your hand nice and wide, uh, controlling the basketball. Not squeezing it, but just cradling it. Good. Excellent. Really, really good. Okay, now, you're not going to do this great, and this is fine, because this will be a little advanced for you. Just do your best with it, and, and we'll, we'll take care of you. Can you go in the corner? And we're just going to imagine the pin downs uh, coming. Screen is being set here. Can you now come off that screen? I don't even care the footwork right now, okay? In this, maybe a head, some head coach might tell you they want you off a hop. A lot would probably tell you they want you off an inside. I don't even care about that part of it right now. I want you to catch the ball with wide feet, get your index finger on the top of the basketball, and do your best to stay on the middle of the basketball throughout the shot, taking your non-shooting hand off the ball. So can we apply these habits into more of a game situation? And we're coming off. Good. Pretty good start. Okay. And uh, I'm not going to go through all these situations because we all know what they are. The, hopefully the player starts to learn what shots do you actually get in a game? And are you practicing those situations? Um, so I, I won't be going through, we don't need to show you how to do this in a baseline drift. You're, you're smart people. You can figure that part of, out, that part of it out. Uh, so complex movement, game movements is one of the layers that I'll add. And then the other layers that uh, I add in sort of the second tier are can you catch a pass, can you catch a dribble? I want to focus a little bit more on those. Everybody says, and the, these guys experienced it last night, can you pick up a dribble? Yeah, I can pick up a dribble, coach. Can you pick up a dribble well without fumbling it in your shooting grip as much as you possibly can? And they realize quickly, oh no, I suck at that because it's this little microscope. Well, if it's a microscope, we can practice it. And if we can practice the microscope, we can get better at it. So, can you move back in for me? We're going to simplify the environment a little bit. We're going to go stationary. I want you to pound the basketball as hard as you can into the floor. And it doesn't need to be as hard as you can right from the beginning. We'll work up to as hard as you can. But you need, to, you need to catch the ball cleanly without fumbling it. And you need to catch it exactly the correct position to hold the basketball and the comfortable. So take a second, put your index finger on the middle of the basketball, your thumb out nice and wide, and now pay attention to, okay, that's correct, but what is comfortable about it as well? How much do you like having the ball on, on your, uh, your palm? How much is touching your fingers? How far apart are your fingers? Where is it touching your non-shooting hand? Just pay attention to that feeling, okay? Now, with trying not to fumble the basketball, trying to catch it cleanly, can you dribble the basketball and find exactly that feeling as much as you possibly can? Brian, every single time that I say the word exactly, I think of you. <laughs> and I try to be mindful of that. You're going to try and do exactly, but you're not obviously a robot. Okay. Pound the basketball. Oh, we fumbled it. Good. Do it again. Not exact. Good. Do it again. Better. We don't need the L. It's not the L that we're necessarily worried about. It's just getting on the middle of the ball, and any part could be the middle. Did you? Oh, no, not quite. Now, how do you feel like you're doing right now? Okay, good. Anthony Bennett, number one pick in the NBA draft. Maybe he should have, uh, shouldn't have been, but that's not his fault. Uh, very good basketball player. In his rookie year in the NBA, we started with this drill. Just pound dribble, can you catch the ball cleanly? The first time he did it, it took him 15 dribbles to be able to catch the ball cleanly the first time. Okay? And then it was about eight more dribbles to be able to do it the second time. And by five minutes later, you know, he could do it every other time. Okay? This is really hard, even in this simple environment. But we can practice it. We can get better at it. So let's see if we can get one where you catch it cleanly with the grip that you like, that is correct. And then we'll go into A, B, C from there. A, B, C. And apply what we're learning here into that situation. Pound dribble. Good. That was close. 
Ooh, yes, no. Didn't fumble it. it, it did he? It, not quite the position you like? Okay, do it again. I, and this is one of my favorite drills to do at clinics for this very reason. Everybody thinks, especially young boys, think this is easy. And you're just discovering, oh, this isn't easy as I thought. And we're not even moving yet. Okay, so can we work on this skill? Yeah, we can. Let's work on it. Good. Go. A. B. C. Good, 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 good. So then we go back to we're working on the skill of can you catch the ball cleanly, but we can add multiple different layers into this. Can we do that a little further out? Can we do that a little faster? Can we do that with some movement? Take a step back for me. What was your name? Sorry? Cato. Cato? Nice to meet you. Thank you, for, thank you for being out here with us. I know you're kind of on the spot, but we appreciate it. Can you do the same thing, pound dribble, with a step straight forward? If you're going to go right hand dribble, let's go with a left foot step, and we'll go left right into an ABC from there. We're going to still apply all these different things into this situation. Good. And if you caught it cleanly, good. Go ahead and shoot it. Try and get your dribble and your foot down at the same time. So you went dribble, step, step. See if it can be dribble, step, catch, step, as much as you possibly can. Good. Better? Want to make it harder, you just add different kinds of movement to it. Now, very rarely are we going to be dribbling straight forward at the rim. Can we take a dribble on a 45 degree angle and pivot, get around into a good body position as much as we possibly can and shoot ABC out of there? Good. So all these things, you're just constantly accountability. Can you build the habit that we're working on in this more complicated environment? Now let's work on catching a pass. I want to see, can we catch a pass as much as possible without bobbling the basketball, with our shooting hand on the middle of the basketball as early as we can. I want to avoid the habit of finding the middle of the ball as we're shooting it. Try to catch it in such a way that you are able to get your middle of the, the middle of your hand on the middle of the ball early. So, if we're working on something new, simplify the environment. Can I get you just right on the, the w wing there, Cato? I'm going to give you the slowest pass, and, and you can come in a little bit closer because I don't think we're quite ready for that distance yet. Okay? I'm going to give you a nice slow pass. I want you to get, move behind it, get your body behind it. I want you to try to pick up, or yeah, I gave you a little clue as to what's going to happen there. Try to catch the basketball with the middle of your hand on the top of the basketball pointed at the target as much as you possibly can. Okay? And the pass looks like that, so hustle behind it. There, good. So I just make the pass as slow as I need to to give them the time to focus on whatever the micro habit is. And the micro habit could be getting your feet set. Okay, now I've got the basketball and building in the micro habit of can I get my index finger on the top of the basketball or whatever the middle of your hand is and just applying. Now we've, we're working a catch into these different situations, but you've got time to be able to hold yourself accountable to doing to building a new habit, doing some things differently. So you go ahead and shoot this one. Good, great shot. Okay. Now we're going that side, hustle behind it, get your feet set. Two things that I don't want to have happen, and Kato, go ahead, Kato. Uh, I don't want to see a player moving their feet after the ball is in their hands. The whole point of this, the ball moving slowly, is so that you have time to make your adjustments to your feet before the ball gets in your hands. So hustle, make the adjustments then, and you were doing a pretty good, you took a tiny step on that last one, but generally you're doing a good job of that. Hustle behind it, good. Make your adjustments there, good. Then you can focus and turn your attention to the hand. Great shot. Now, how many little moves did you make on the basketball with your hand when you picked it up? Okay, how many do we want to make? Zero, if possible. Pick it up correctly, yeah. Still little tiny ones, but much smaller, so we got better. Get better still. Pick it up, good. Hard, isn't it? So many of us, I had a little thing that I did where I would catch a shot or catch a pass, 
and then lift my right foot about a centimeter off the ground and put it back down in the same spot. Why did I do that? Because it was a habit. What benefit did the habit offer me? Really nothing. I was just lifting my foot and putting it back in the same position. So we got to get rid of it. He was finding right now that when he picks up the basketball, he likes to move his fingers on the basketball. Well, if you're moving your hands on the basketball while you're shooting it, is that going to help you? Okay, that's something that we can simplify. Uh, obviously, we want to layer this drill. We want to make this more like a game and see if we can uh, exercise uh, the micro skills into a more game applicable situation. Let's speed, add a little bit more speed. Can we get our feet set? Can we get our hands set on the basketball? Can we hit the correct set point? I would do this drill layered with ABC or uh, isolation drill or uh, slow to quick, which I'll show you in a second. So you can build up catching a pass. We can change the angle. We can add the pass into a game situation. With all these layers you can start to put together. Three simple ones, distance, speed, simple movement. Game movement, passes and dribbles are the, the, the second layer that I, I uh, tend to focus on. Cato, thank you very much, I appreciate your time. Can I get the next individual to come out here? Perfect. What was your name again? Alex, thanks so much for being here and thank you for allowing me to coach you last night. I, I hope that was a, I hope you took that as a positive thing. To me, that was a positive thing. So let me give you a couple of shots of isolation drill. I do a lot of isolation drill just because I feel like it, it no matter what your form is, what you naturally do or what your mistake is, it's a great kind of catch-all drill for, uh, for different habits. So with you, Alex, in particular, I want you to avoid the ball going back over top of your head. So find out, okay, hold it right there. You like to go there. See how high your elbow is right now? How much could you lift your elbow from this point? This is really where your shooting motion begins. How much, how much higher can you get your elbow to go? Not much. So how much lift do you have left in your shot? Not very much. We want to try and get into that set point. Now, how much higher can you get your elbow from there? Now we can create a, like, probably triple the amount of lift, which is going to be more power and more arc. Those are good things. So don't let the ball go back over your head. For you, isolation drill, I want you to reinforce over top of your nose, making a square shape, not a diamond shape. So one of the things I'll do with players like this, hold it up. So when you go a little bit too fast, you just go back to your old habits. We need to slow down. We need to go back to the parking lot and create new habits. If you continue to just go fast, go fast, go fast, then you might not be able to break that up. I would love it if you could, but right now you're showing that you can't. That's fine. You can't do it in that environment. Let's make the environment easier so that you can learn to do it. Hold, two, three, lift, okay? And players sometimes like to go fast. We gotta slow them down and hold them accountable to that position. One, two, three, go. Good. So I'll put my hand behind the basketball so that the player can feel. And I, right in the beginning, I'll even say, I'm going to put my hand there. Don't change anything. So go back to shoot your old shot. Here's where my hand is. And feel how much you're hitting my hand. Right now, it's over top of your nose. And you're, you're hitting it fairly hard, which means the ball's probably going to go back several inches. Okay? We want to make sure that we can keep it there and lifting up. Okay. So create a really simple environment and allow them the time to work on it. I've had guys where we've done this drill for numerous days because they just, they have trouble breaking the particular habit that's holding them back. We've got millions of dollars on the line, so we're gonna spend a few more days really trying to reinforce a, a habit if we, if we have it. Slow down. Uh, so the big point on the drill that I want you to focus on Hold it for three seconds. Let your body w learn where that position is. One, two, three, lift. Good. And really concentrate on up with your elbow, then forward with your hand, not forward, then up. Up and good. And don't worry about results right now. You're figuring out where that sweet spot is. Good. Two, three. 
The reason I take those three seconds, the, I just feel like the longer your body can be in the position, the faster it's going to learn. And if it's in a, a whole, if it's in the, that correct position for a few milliseconds and you're asking the milliseconds to stack up with the number of reps, you're not getting a lot of time in that position over the number of reps. But if we can slow down and give it two or three seconds, let your body kind of learn and get familiar with that position, and we add several hundred reps, all of a sudden that becomes a significant period of time, and your body, I believe, learns it a little bit faster. Two, three, lift. Good. So, we can add movement. I would go to ABC next. After that, obviously ABC is a segmented shot. And uh, hopefully you're asking yourself, does he want people to be a two-motion shooter? My answer is no. I don't want two-motion necessarily. At the NBA level, if you're capable of getting the ball to the set point with a little pause and shooting that motion, to me that's more sh a compact motion uh, that will be easier to repeat, but you need to be pretty strong to be able to do it. Most youth players I don't think are strong enough to be able to be a two motion shooter. They should probably be one motion. So let's learn to be one motion now. Uh, do you remember ABC from yesterday? Let's get a couple of reps of ABC. Index finger around the top of the basketball. Take it to your set point. And re remember yours isn't back here, it's over there. And then take your non-shooting hand off the ball. So A, B, sorry, two, uh, two hands on the ball at A. Lift it to B, then take your non-shooting hand off. B, good. A little lower. Trying to be here, not there. Okay, here, not there. Good, that's better. Good job, Al. Alex, sorry, Alex, okay. Yeah. Good, okay. Now, we add a little speed to it. Can we do, can we find the correct set point without having to stop there? So I want the ball now to move as slowly as you possibly can. Take four seconds to get from here to your set point, okay? And then when you get there, accelerate. Good. So we're starting to smooth the motion out, but rather than just going fast from the beginning and hoping we hit the right set point, make a smooth motion where you give yourself the time to hold yourself accountable. Ball went back on that one. So take those four seconds and you're paying attention to when I arrive at the right set point. You feel how it hit my hand? Okay. So slow down a little bit. You're already up to like two seconds. One, two, three, four. There it is, go. I'll do little things to help players with this by like when, when I tap your elbow, that's when I want you to accelerate. Okay, and I'll tap his elbow when it gets too parallel to the floor. Good. Can you step back? Can you hop in, land here, slow to quick? Good. Just trying to constantly add layers. He showed that he's ready for a little bit more potentially. Okay, can we give him a little bit more? Can we learn to apply this in a more difficult environment? Uh, face that direction. Oh, you got basketball on your hand. There, good. Good. Always accountability to building a new habit. If you're, just, if you're allowing them to slip out, they can't do it in that environment. Simplify the environment for a few reps. Oh, why did you stop? I know... Uh, I had a moment there too. Why did you stop? Right. And I had a moment where instinctively I'm like, he's not ready for that. And then my other brain took over and said, let him try. So we don't know the answer. Maybe you were going to do it well there. I actually kind of wish you had shot that one, but I'm glad that you were aware, oh shoot, I might not be ready for this. Okay. And then, so try that speed. Let's see how we do. It's actually not bad. Try again. Uh, a little more back over your head. Try and keep it in front of you. So I love to find little cues and I love to explain something to a player the way I think about it and then come back to it a little bit later and say, how do you think about that now? And then from that moment on, I use their language. Okay, it's not me forcing my language upon them, it's me teaching them the way they like to learn. I'll give you an example. Wesley Awundu with the Orlando Magic 
had the same habit, took the ball back over his head. And I said to him, imagine you're pressing your face to a pane of glass and somehow the basketball is able to be on the other side of the pane of glass. It can't break the glass when it goes back. Okay, it's got to stay on that side of the basketball, lifting it up and forward. That's what I explained to him. And then he came out in 10 shots. He did it fantastic. And I said, okay, that's awesome. Didn't expect it to go that well that quickly. What did you think about it? He said, it's a force field. So I did like there's a force field and the ball can't break the force field. And we never talked about the pane of glass again. We talked about the force field from now on. Force field, pane of glass, whatever you do. Eh, Still not quite. I'll give you one more, see if you can, don't, whatever you do, Alex, if you're gonna make a mistake, make a new mistake. Don't make this one. If you're gonna make a mistake, make that mistake. Be too flat. Good, much better. Okay, now, did that feel way out in front of you? Why did it feel what your, that's your feeling, that is 100% true. Why did it feel that way? But why did it feel like they weren't extended? Your, your position was here. Why did it feel like it was way out there? This is important. Kind of keep, keep talking about that one. Because you're used to here, and all of a sudden here felt like that. When I took my golf lesson, everything was going to the right before the lesson. And I went to the instructor, I said, everything's going right. I either slice stuff or I block it out to the right. I cannot hit a ball straight to save my life. He says, take a couple of swings. And I take a couple of swings and he says, well, of course everything's going to the right. That's where your club face is pointed. And I look down and I'm like, no, it's not. And he says, yeah, your club face is open. It's like that. It's gonna push the ball that direction. You need to square it up. And he put me in a square, square club face position. And I looked down at him and I said, that's not square, that's pointed left. And he said, no, it's not, that's square. And I said, no, it's not, this ball is going to hit me in the shin. I'm gonna swing and it's gonna hit me there. He says, take a swing, dead straight. I'm like, huh, he said, see? And I said, no, but like it looks, it look, it's closed. He says, no, it's not, it's square. You're just so used to the feeling of open that square looks closed to you. Take another swing. Dead straight. I'm like, all right. And what I realized, my calibration was off, okay? And Alex is having that moment right now where he is feeling like, okay, I'm used to this, this feels like that. And I would take video of him and show him at that moment so that he can have some reinforcement that this is. You had a great one on the last rep. Let's see if we can have a, another great one here. Pretty good. Good. Let's complicate the environment a little bit. Can you, stay in there, can you step in, inside foot, so with your right foot step towards me, okay? And then you're gonna catch, pivot, and then into slow to quick. Okay, so now we got a catch, we're adding a catch, we're adding a, maybe not a simple movement, but a, uh, oh, went back overhead. And that's fine. We gotta just learn to apply this new habit into this environment. Better? And one more. Good, okay. All right, Alex, thank you very much. So slow to quick, I'll go through a progression where it's isolation drill, A, B, C, slow to quick, and I'm uh, introducing other layers as we go through that, but I'm trying to make it a fluid shot that gets to the right position here. So I spend a bunch of time focusing on teaching where that position is and how to find it. The last two layers that I add, uh, one is obvious and one is the one that I'm really challenging myself with. How much time do I, can I get uh, one player at the top here and then another player on the, uh, in the corner with me? I'll get you to take the basketball. Uh, these last two layers, first one is adding a defender. And it's not an on-off switch, you have a defender or you don't. It's a dimmer switch. You can add the, the defender in stages. So, what makes 
a defender complicated is the fact that you don't get to go exactly where you want to go and do exactly what you want to do. You've got somebody trying to stop you. So for the, the first layer that I'll add with the defender is, let's imagine that we're going uh, good feet. We want nice and wide feet square to the target as much as we can on the shot, okay? On, so we're gonna cut towards the, uh, the basketball, okay? For two steps, I'm just gonna get him uncomfortable, not let him go exactly where he wants to go, okay? And then I'm gonna back off and give him the last couple of steps to turn his attention to the habit that he needs to build. Okay, so cut towards the basketball, good, good, and then I'll let you go, good, okay, and were you at last night? You remember ABC? Show me ABC. A, B, non-shooting handoff, good. Whenever you get to, whenever we do ABC, when you get the ball to that set point, take your non-shooting hand off the basketball. Can you give them the pass a little bit early? We'll get, uh, we'll get the pass a more around the, uh, the wing. So all I want to do is just make him a little uncomfortable, then give him a whole bunch of time to be able to think about what he needs to think about and apply the habit into this situation. Good shot. Okay. Then the next layer that I'll tend to add is, okay, I'm going to play defense up until the catch and then I'm gonna back off and you get to shoot how it, the, the shot that you want. But the defender is now in your space up until the catch. Okay, still ABC. Good. So now can we apply the habit that we're working on into this kind of environment? Good, excellent. Then, Okay, you're allowed to contest the shot, but you are not allowed to block. You're allowed to do anything that you want, but you cannot interfere with the shooting motion. My hand's gonna be there. You focus on getting in the right position and ignoring what I'm doing, okay? Good. And obviously, this could be slow to quick. This could be quick to quick. This could be a shooting motion. Right now, we're slowing down the shooting motion for these players because they don't have a lot of experience with these drills. If we're most likely, by the time I get to something like this, we're shooting a shot. We might be focused on, okay, get us on balance as you possibly can. Get your non-shooting hand, but we're probably not doing ABC in the beginning with, with this. To last layer that I'll add uh, uh, defensively will just be live defense, okay? Which at that point, Brings me to the last uh, layer that I start to add. No, not necessarily last, uh, because it could come in at any point, adding a decision. And Brian talked about this yesterday. Uh, raise your hand if you're aware of Chris Oliver. Oh, not as many as I expected. Chris Oliver, probably one of the foremost people of uh, basketball decision making, building a great reputation. His website's basketballimmersion.com. Absolutely check out Chris's stuff, he's fantastic. Um, really trying to encourage making decisions within your drills. And the, the simple level, you're good, thank you very much, I appreciate your help. I'll bore you for a second since you were nice enough to come out. I, this is, I'll show you about the level that I'm at in using decision training uh, because I'm really trying to figure out when can I introduce this but not just allow players to go back to old hat. I find as soon as you introduce too much of a layer, they don't have time to think, they go back to their old habit. And if I introduce this a little bit too early, sometimes it, 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 they're not able to execute, that's fine, I just try and simplify it to there. Uh, what I start with is just the simple cue, you don't know what's gonna happen uh, on the, the, the catch, I can give you hands up, Hands up means defender has their hands up, you're gonna take a dribble, okay? Hands down, that's the shot. So back up a, a step and try and get your feet engaged. So ball is in the air, get your feet in the air, come and meet the, uh, the pass. We've got hands up, you're gonna read the cue and we're gonna try and apply whatever habit. So try and get feet a little bit wider and a little bit more on balance there. Same cue, much better, good. So try and apply the habit into, now, Let's imagine your bad habit is those wide feet. Every single shot, regardless of the situation, I want you to think wide. And when it's a, two, uh, when it's a shot off the dribble, you've actually got two shot options there. You should have good feet twice. It should be on the catch, because you don't know if you're gonna be shooting that shot or not. You'd happen to not have it, then you gotta have good feet when you land as well. 
Okay, feet down, good. Good, good. So you just, and it doesn't even matter what the cues are. I'll do another one. Can you back up to center court? Uh, right back to center. You're gonna attack a defender on like a three on two, okay? And if the defender happens to be here, where, which side would you like to attack? Yeah, you wanna go this way, okay? This, it's really easy for me to defend you this way. It's gonna be really a lot harder for me to have to do that. So you wanna try and attack that. Read which one is my high foot, go in that direction, then get to good feet, okay? And I'm, I'm not gonna give you the cue right away. You're gonna be attacking me. Good, here, there. Perfect, yeah. Okay, let's go back. Now, that moment, that's what we need to have. The, the second you went, you knew, shoot, I went the wrong way. Now, in a game, is there a wrong way? No, you go this way. Sometimes you make wrong reads. Hopefully we get a basket out of it and everything's happy, everybody says, that was the right thing to do. Even though textbook would say, that wasn't the right thing to do. Awesome, you make a read, sometimes you make wrong reads. Do the best that you can. Good. Where are you for speed? If like 100% is game speed, what speed were you at there? Okay, perfect, give me 75. Give me 80% and be ready because I'm going to trick you on this one. Because defenders can fake too. Good. Okay. And you're just introducing, make, make a read, make a decision. I'll do hand up, hand to the side. This space is occupied. You got to go that way. Uh, we can use the defender as a cue. We can layer defenders and, de and decisions. They go under, there's your shot. They go over, we're curling. You read where the defender is and apply the habits. And I'll do some of that with stripping back the other layer and just say, make your read and then get into slow to quick and reinforce the habits that we're building as shots. Just to recap. Add speed, add uh, distance, add um, simple movement, just one step in all kinds of different directions. Add def uh, game movements, add ca catches and passes, add defenders and decisions, and if you add something, you can always strip away something else just to simplify the environment. And you're trying to find that sweet spot where Whatever habit you're working on is a challenge that they can meet, not so hard that they can't ever meet it, and not so simple that it's not a challenge. And working towards applying what the, the, the little micro skill that is holding them back into a game situation. I have three minutes left. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask? First of all, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Nice work on the fake. I tried to, to mess you up, but yeah. And a great shot on it, by the way. No questions? Oh, coach. Do I worry about the, the wrist being bent back down here? Everything's a sliding scale of gray. I need it to be bent back here so that we can be under the basketball. I would like, in a perfect world, it to be locked here and we move in one piece but that's not real, really a realistic motion for most players. As long as it's bending as we're lifting and we're arriving here without having to do that at the last moment, I'm okay with it. I just, I get scared when I see this. If you're making a quick violent movement right as your shooting motion starts, that doesn't lead well to consistency. So trying to make that a fluid movement or in a perfect world, probably no movement. I just don't know that the perfect world is a realistic world, if that makes sense. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much. Oh, coach. As far as giving a cue, in the drill, the cue can be whatever you want. You can give a hand cue, you can give a foot cue, you can give a verbal cue, you can give, like, experiment with it. And I'll be honest, I'm terrible at this right now. My, my knowledge of this is, is growing 
as this is go, uh, going along. Brian's probably a better uh, uh, person to ask that question to. Uh, and, and Chris Oliver, fantastic. Like, check out basketballimmersion.com. So that, that's where I would, uh, the cues can be whatever you want them to be. And just try and find cues that are as much like a game as you possibly can. So, coach. Right. Right. Uh, so, are, are you doing that at times? And I'm not saying you have to do it all the time. Perfect, great. So, and it's not that you have to do that all the time. Uh, can you grab five minutes with an individual player before practice? Like, just being creative with what your resources are and say, I only have three minutes. Great, can you grab one player for three minutes before practice and, and get their form shooting with, uh, with them? Can you, as a team, like, Shooting is so hard to teach in a team atmosphere because you've got 12 players with 12 different bad habits and you're supposed to try and teach them all. I like isolation drill, ABC, just because it's, they, they end up being good catch-alls for a bunch of different, I can, every single one of my players has done isolation drill, uh, but they all do it with a different focus. Bismack is focusing on twisting his wrist. Aaron, it was his thumb position. Dwayne Dedman, it was moving from here. Uh, like, they all had a different thing that they were focusing on in that moment. So, you may have them all, I mean, it's tough. That's why, like, your job is way harder than mine. Uh, good question. Do we, can we do it? I do some stuff with NBA guys on the line. You get about 10 reps before mentally they cash out and probably kids are about the same way. So as long as you're aware of that and you don't overuse it, the reality is that may be helpful but that's also boring. And, and ultimately we want to shoot on a hoop. So I'll do it on occasion just to say, all right, just focus on making this move. Do not worry about the result at all. There is no result. The result is can you get backspin on the ball? Can you whatever? Good, you can do that. Now ignore the hoop while you're shooting at the hoop. Get the, get the bat, uh, apply what we just learned into this environment. Get them back on the hoop as, as quickly as you can. Is there anything wrong with that? No, but you're, you're working towards the game.